graphed the linear function f, where f of x is equal to ax plus b on the same set of axes on a domain of negative 4 to 4 for the following values of a and b. Letter a, a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. And if you're anything like me right now, I'm like, what? What exactly do they want? Um, so there's a lot going on here. So let's take it piece by piece. First of all, they're telling us that we have this particular function. I know it's unsatisfying because it's like, well, there's just letters. Well, let's just take a second. Let's, let's write down f of x is equal to uh, ax plus b. Now, I like to write f of x as just y, okay? It's just easier for me to interpret for some reason. So y is equal to ax plus b. Now, this is where practice and pattern recognition helps. This should look familiar to you. This should look familiar to something, right? What does it look familiar to? Well, it looks familiar to the linear equation, right, of a, of a straight line, right? The equation of a straight line. Y is equal to mx plus b. Doesn't that look basically identical? So once I make this connection, I realize that the a that they're giving us is really the slope. And the b that they're giving us is really the same thing, right? It's the y-intercept, right? The b hasn't changed. So essentially, I know that a now represents the slope. So this thing right here is a slope value. And then this thing right here is a y-intercept. And now I know that any linear line, any linear equation is defined, and I wrote that down here, any linear line is defined by its slope and its y-intercept. They are unchanging for that particular function. Okay, change the slope or change the y-intercept, you change the line. So now, let me just erase some of this. Okay, so that's the first piece. Now what they want us to do is they want us to graph this thing, basically. It says graph it. Okay, cool. So if you know the slope, you know the y-intercept, you can graph it. You can use your calculator, or you can uh, basically um, graph it on a piece of paper that I'm going to do. All right. Now, what I would actually suggest is rewriting this as your, as your, um, in your linear equation. So y is equal to mx plus b. Let's plug in the slope there of 2 plus now 3. So this is literally what you're looking to graph. See, now that's pretty easy. Right? If you're like, oh, I can easily graph this. Well, that's, yeah, this isn't bad. The problem with this is trying to interpret what they're asking. That's why sometimes it's important to just take it piece by piece. All right? The next thing is we have to graph this thing, but they tell us on a domain. Oh, goodness, I thought we were done with domain, right? So, nope, we're not. Remember, domain is simply the set, a set of x values, right? A quote-unquote range. Don't confuse that with the actual range, but it's just a, a set of x values, okay? Set of x values. So we have to graph this thing on this particular domain, right? So if I were to now, let's just say, create an axis. So I'll do that here, right? I'll do that now, like, you know, I don't know, something like this, right? I know I need to now, the domain is going to be from negative 4 to 4 on the x-axis, right? You know that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, okay? So actually, let me just put that in black. So this is x and this is y. So now let's find negative 4. So negative 4 is right about here, right? Right about here is negative 4, okay? And then where's positive 4? Positive 4 would be somewhere about here. All right, great. Now, the first thing I want to do when I graph this function is the easiest thing to do is just plot the y-intercept, okay? So the y-intercept is 3, so literally go up to point 3 here and just plug it in, okay? Plot that point. Now what we have to do is working off of this point, let's, let's, write, let's now create the next point by using the slope. So remember, slope m, which is a in this case, they're both the same thing, is the same thing as saying change in y over the change in x. And they told us the value, right, which would mean it's 2. Remember, though, you can write 2 as a fraction, 2 over 1, right? That's the same thing. And this is important because this tells you as y changes by 2, positive 2 that is, x will change by 1, positive, right? They're both positive. Or they could both be, and then you might say, a keen observer might say, well, could they both be negative? Because wouldn't that work out to be positive overall? And actually, you'd be right, okay? So what I now realize is, let me just go backtrack here. All right, now what I realize is I'm going to work off of this point, okay? And you'll see now I'm going to do both ways. So 
from this point, I know I have to go to the right on x by 1, and then I have to go up 2 on y, right? So I basically have to go up to that little point, okay? And I'm going to plot it. Let me just move the y out of the way. Now, if you notice here, I'm going to run. I'm not going to have a lot of room, but I'm going to draw it anyway. I have to go all the way to 4. So I got to do this again, 1 and then 2, right? 1 and then 2, and it looks like one more. So it looks like right here, right? And now what I'm going to need to do is then go the other way. Okay, but now notice, remember I said that you could also look at this as negative and negative. So if I go over to the left one, that would be like a negative one here, right? And then if I go down two, that would be like a negative two there, right? So the next point would be here. And notice that looks like it's pretty much right in line. So I can keep going, right? Here, and then I go down here, and then I do it again. And here it is. This is it. This is the line, okay? So now, let's graph it. All you got to do is draw a nice little straight line through it, if you can. And that looks... Uh, I'm going to tweak it a little bit, just because I'm very particular. There you go. All right? So there is now that linear line, and that's from 4 to 4. Now what I'm going to do is let me give myself a little more space, because I think it says on the same set of axes we've got to do all these, right? So let's now bring this on... Oops, lost some of the points. Yeah, that's okay. So let's bring this now. Let's line it up as best we can here. So that looks pretty good to me. All right. So we lost the points, but no big deal. Let me just erase them. We don't need all of them anyway, right? Okay. And that would be that particular red line. So let me box this in red. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for this one. Now you could write out the formula if you like in blue. Okay. So actually... You know what I'll do? Let me rewrite this in red. Okay? Let me rewrite this in red so we can follow. So this is going to be y is equal to 2x plus 3. Okay. The next one in blue now, it's going to be y is equal to 2x plus 4. This is the slope and this is the y-intercept. So look, the slope's the same, right? So I know my line is going to be angled exactly the same way, but what's the difference? The difference is now where it intersects the graph. So basically now, Instead of intersecting the graph at 3, it intersects it at 4, right? And I'm literally going to draw now the same line. So let me just do this. Let me actually duplicate this because it's on the same uh, angle, okay? And I'm, then I'm going to color that in red. So let's hope that, and i got to line it up just right. It's got to go from 4 to 4. So that looks pretty, that looks pretty close to me. All right, hopefully. I know when I move this, it's going to move a little bit, but that looks pretty good. All right, might be off by ever so slight amount, but I think we see the picture, right? So let's just color this now in blue. And that's that one. Okay, now how about then the, uh, let's do now the, uh, let's change the color. We'll do green or something. Let's now do this one, and you might already be seeing the pattern, right? Y will be equal to 2x minus 4 now. Okay. So let's find the y-intercept of negative 4. So we go down 1, 2, 3, and then bada-bing, 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then it's the same slope, so it's going to be angled the same way, so I'm going to use that same line. Okay, oops. And I don't know why it's not copying at the moment, so give me one second. So copy. Okay. And there we go. So now it's going to be the same thing. We got to go from four to four. I'm going to wind up going off this page, but it's okay. This should be from four to four about, right? And that should be lined up pretty well. Okay. Let's change that to green also. So color. And that's green. All right. If you notice here, right, if we went over one, we would go up two. You see how the slope is the same there as the other one? So that takes care of that. And then last but not least, why don't we choose purple? We'll do this one. And now that's going to be at negative 5, and you might already see the pattern. So plot that point. Okay. Draw your line on in. Not really sure why it's not copying again. So let's copy this. Okay. Let's paste it on in. And then we're just going to make it purple. And it's got to go from 4 to 4, so it's got to be down there a little bit. And then let's just color it. And that is it. Okay, so this is what it would look like on your calculator. If you were to graph it on the calculator, this is what it would look like. And your screen, by the way, would only go to from negative 4 to 4, right? So the graph would look this small. Your y-axis would be a little higher, right? We could extend that y-axis 
all the way on up to, you know, roughly about here. And now it angled a little bit right about there. And then we would extend this one all the way down, you know, somewhere about there or so. And I think that's pretty, pretty, oh, pretty good. And now it's getting all over the place. There you go. All right. So that's basically it. That's what it would look like on your calculator. So guys, I hope this helped. All right. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.